Hi, I'm Claire Melantine, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be creating a monster box. And not just any monster box, but a feelings monster box. And this is a wonderful family play therapy intervention. And we, what we know is that it's so important to include the, the parents and the family members in the play therapy process. Because when we're only working with the child individually and independently of the family system, the child is actually the least powerful person to make lasting change. And so when we want lasting change to happen in a family, we know that it's crucial to engage the parents in the play process. And so what we're going to create today is this is called a feelings monster. And how we're going to do this is this is going to be a two session intervention. And so on the first session, you're going to invite the parents to come in and the other family members, if that's appropriate, to the play therapy. And you have them create a monster together. And so what they're going to do is they're going to identify any feeling that they want to work on for that week. And it's important that you have the parents and the child work together to identify what feeling they want to, ident to be working through. And that it's not us telling them what they need to because then there's going to be a lot more buy-in from the whole family system. Uh, when it's their idea. And so I'm very liberal with this. They can choose any emotion that they want to, even if it's not the treatment issue. Because what we're going to learn from this intervention is that as the family starts identifying and understanding how this emotion and emotions in general are displayed and projected and talked about or hidden as the case may be, this is going to give them new insight and awareness into how they engage and hopefully through the course of time is also going to increase their emotional awareness and their ability to tolerate and hold each other's emotions, even if it's something that can be uncomfortable. And we know that for the child's progress to continue, the child moves in tandem with the parents. And so this is why it's so important that we are doing family-based interventions in our play therapy practice. So how this works, on session one, you're going to invite the family to come in and you're going to give them an empty Kleenex box and this becomes the monster. And so the family chooses any emotion that they want to create. This is going to be our feeling monster box. And so let's say the family chooses worry. And so in session one, your entire session, the family is going to be creating and designing what their monster looks like to them. And so this is one of those great reduce, reuse, and recycle interventions. And so many of us have tons of different uh, scraps and arts and craft leftover things, but this is a great way to utilize these things effectively. So you can use pipe cleaners and you can use googly eyes. Um, I like to have a wide variety of different eyes. I find that those are very significant for a lot of families. Feathers, pom-poms, balloons, paints, glue, all of those types of things are going to be helpful as well as egg cartons and that's something that I don't have shown but empty egg cartons are also a great thing because oftentimes those can become the big eyes as you'll see in some of these examples. And so the family decorates and designs what their worry monster is going to be. And then you instruct the family to take it home with them for the week. And during the week, anytime anybody, not just the identified patient or the child client, but anybody in the family feels that particular emotion, so let's say worry, for example, they're either going to draw a small picture of what that worry is or what it feels like, or if they're old enough, you know, they can write down on a little piece of paper, and then they're going to feed it to the monster. And this opening of the tissue box is a great mouth and I, it's perfect so you can just stick the worry in there. And then at the next family therapy session the family brings in their monster and we empty it out and we just we find out what the monster was fed during the week. And oftentimes this leads to a lot of aha moments for the family of like wow I never knew that that was something that is constantly one of my worries or you know, it can start to bring stuff up for the child that you're already working on in therapy. So if you're working with an anxious child, for example, then, you know, you can start talking about where they feel this big worry in their stomachs or how it feels to them in their chest or their heart. Um, oftentimes when there's worries, there's a lot of psychosomatic symptoms. 
And then this has a really important and wonderful part where we can then engage the parents as our partners in the healing process. And so we could talk about with their child, wow, this is a really big worry you had this week. I wonder what could mom and dad do to help with this worry, to make it not feel so big? And then you're already bridging the gap between parent and child and you're working on parenting techniques, you're working on naming and identifying feelings, you're working on building relationships, you're working on the healing pro process of play. And all these things are taking place simultaneously with this intervention. So one of the stories that I like to give to parents um, when I'm beginning to introduce this is there's a wonderful Native American folktale and this is about you know grandfather is teaching his grandson about the two wolves that are inside of us and that are constantly at battle and the grandchild asks his grandfather well grandpa which wolf wins and the grandfather replies it depends on which one you feed and I think that that's so important when we're working with families that we help them identify Okay, what are we feeding, you know, these problem areas, um, you know, or these negative emotions or, you know, these negative interactions that are happening? How much are we feeding those versus the positive ones? And so I hope that this will be a great toolbox, a great intervention for your toolbox, and that you'll find a lot of joy that comes with this. There is one thing to note. For certain parents, you may want to meet with them independently prior to engaging with this intervention because you may need to talk about appropriate disclosure. And so what we know for a child, there's no such thing as an inappropriate disclosure. But we want to make sure that with the parents, sometimes the filter um, isn't very strong, especially when the family is in significant chaos or crisis. And so you may want to meet with the parents prior to this activity to talk through what would be an appropriate disclosure for them with what a parent worry is. And so that's just something to keep in mind when we're beginning to engage uh, parents in the play therapy process and making sure that we're treating the whole family system and balancing out all the needs of that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I'll look forward to seeing you at my next segment.